Night is generally my time for walking. I love to speculate on the characters who are out under the moon, who scurry past. Come on, hurry, or the pig will be gone. Their faces caught for a moment in lamplight, or upon those that endlessly cross the river. Robbing steps to Westminster. Where do they hurry? From where have they come? Where are they going? Questions. Some that will be answered. Many that will not. Or I think of the beggar sleeping out in St. Martin's Court. Or the footsteps of a child walking alone in the night. Lost, perhaps. Asking. Sir, might you know the way to High Holborn? It's a very long way from here, my dear. I know, sir. I came from there tonight, but I lost my way going back. You came all alone? Oh, I don't mind that, but I am a little frightened now. Why do you ask me? I might tell you the wrong way. I'm sure you won't. Really? Well, you are quite an old gentleman, and... Not that old, I'm about to say. But then, looking at the child, I think maybe I do seem trustworthy at least. And I can't help wondering what her story is. Come along, then. I'll take you there. She puts her hand in mine, and we go together. Who sent you so far by yourself? Somebody who has been very kind to me. And what have you been doing? I can't say. But there's nothing wrong. Is it a secret? Yes, a big secret. And something makes me ask. Do you know what it is? And it becomes clear to me she doesn't know. And I realize that I want to know what she's doing. And who sent her out so inconsiderately. Here we are. Grandfather! Oh, no! Oh. Oh, I got lost. What? But this gentleman found me. Oh, I mean, I, I found him. Oh. And he found the way home. Oh, here we are. Why, bless you. Nell, how could you lose your way? Oh. What if I had lost you? Nell. Oh, my dear. So, little Nell, all alone. Except for the little old man peering out from the door of his shop. Sir, I, I am eternally in your debt. Please, oh. please, come in. Come in. Oh. Uh, and so I enter into the old curiosity shop, for that's what it is, full of the most incredible clutter, suits of armour, a coal scuttle full of billiard balls, tapestries, weapons of wood and iron. Sir, sir, you must be tired, please, to sit. As I do so, I notice the child skip through an inner door and I catch just a glimpse of a little bed. However can I thank you, sir? By taking better care of your granddaughter next time, sir. More care of her? No one ever loved a little girl as much as I love Nelly. Well, sending her out at this time of night, I hardly consider... I that... don't consider her. That's how much you know. Little Nelly. Nelly. And his expression oh. softens, and a kind of raptness comes into his eyes, and we sit there, in silence for a while, until the little door opens and Nell comes out, her light brown hair loose now around her neck. You see, she's not my child, sir. Her mother was, and she was poor, and I have saved nothing. I, I live as you see, but Nell, oh yes, she, she, she shall be rich one day. Nell, do I care for you? Eh, do I? Of course, Grandfather. And do I love you? Of course, Grandfather. Y yes, say it, say it for me, Nelly. You love me, Grandfather, and I love you. Why, we love each other. And she cheerfully goes back to her tasks. Look how she clears and tidies, and trust me, sir, I do care for her, only for her. Everything is for her. Oh, yes. Grandfather. And there she is, this Nell holding a coat and hat and... Uh, th those aren't mine, my dear. Uh, no, they're grandfather's. But he's not going out, are you, sir? Sure. Well, uh, yes, he is. But what happens to you? I stay here. 
I, I always do. Besides, I have my songbird. Come along now, sir. Time is passing. I'll walk along with you. Good night, Grandfather. And good night, sir. And thank you. Angels guard thee, Nell. <laughs> Early in the morning, I'll be home. You won't have to ring twice, Grandfather. I always wait. You know I do. And good night. Good night to you, sir. And once more, uh, my thanks. Sir. I walk to the end of the street and stand, not quite knowing why I am loitering there. And the more I think about what I have seen, the less I can explain it. I stay here. I always do. And I know that I must know more. And so it is that two days later I return to Hoban and enter the old curiosity shop to find... You will murder me one of these days, won't you, eh? A very different scene. Oh, and you'd swear away my life. We all know that. Uh, my dear sir, you interrupt us at a critical moment. <laughs> a young man, 21 or 2. It didn't work, did it? I'm here, alive, and mean to stay alive. His foot on a chair... A contemptuous grin on his face. <laughs> Until I'm able to see my sister. Uh, your sister? You, you poison her mind uh, against me and pretend to care while you work her to death to add a few more shillings to the money that's already uh, too much to count. Here's a moralist to talk of poisoned minds. You have spent every penny, abused every favour, <laughs> thrown away every chance you've ever been given, and you've been given more than enough. <sighs> well, Grandfather, if we are to wait... As it seems as if we are, I'll you, call in my friend. You are, you are. Dick Swiveller, come on in. Hello, Ah, oh, hey. Frank. Yes, quite. My grandfather. Sit down, Dick. Is the old gent agreeable? Sit down. I observe that whilst Mr Frank, evidently Nell's brother, is furiously angry, Mr Swiveller, his friend, appears to be under a rather more spiritual influence. Oh. Good Lord, who are you, sir? Me, sir. Yes, sir, you, sir. A friend. A friend of the family. Perhaps one day a friend of yours, Mr Swiveller. Will you have a drink with me, sir? I decline. <coughs> he sits down. Mm -hmm. Grandfather and grandson mm -hmm. proceed to stare at one another. <laughs> Why do you bring your drunken friends here, eh? eh? How often do I have to tell you I have no money? <laughs> I have nothing except Nelly. I am poor. And I know better. You've chosen your own path. Leave me and the girl alone. She'll be a woman soon, Grandfather. And it would be a pity if she were made to forget her brother. You take care. One day she'll be rich and you'll be in the gutter. When she has your money. How like a poor man you talk. Dick, shut up, will you? Grandfather, I'm sorry I've been so long. I... Oh. Well, Nelly. Do they teach you to hate me? Frank, of course they don't. Do they tell you to love me, though? They don't talk about you at all. Oh, I believe you there. But I do love you, because you're my brother. Well, hurrah for the little gal. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> and if only you would stop making Grandfather so angry, then I could love you even more. That's today's lesson, is it? But the child doesn't answer, because we are suddenly aware that there is someone else in the shop. Someone who entered with Nell but somehow remains unseen until he wishes to announce himself. Well, oh. what a pleasant family scene, eh? All happy at home, round the empty hearth, eh? <laughs> and this is your grandson neighbour, eh? He is. A short man. A very short man. But having about him some kind of tremendous power. And this? Mr. Richard Swiveller, sir, at your service. <laughs> and this? Pointing at me, as if I were just one more curiosity in the shop. A gentleman who showed Nell the way one night. Is that so? Showed it away! <laughs> oh, very good. <sighs> Daniel Quilp, what are you doing here? Hello, Frank. Just a little business. 
Then you may as well tell the old man that as long as he has Nell, I will come here to see her. Whenever I wish, I will come ten times a week if I want. And now, since I have seen her, I will go. Goodbye. Dick, come. Before I leave, I should like to address a remark or two, if I may be so bold, on the subject of filial affection. Come on! So much for relations. Thank God I answer to none, nor need you, neighbour. Were you not as weak as a reed and nearly as senseless? What would you have me do, sir? It's easy to talk and sneer, but what would you do? What would I do? Something violent, no doubt. Oh, something violent. Uh, well, you'd have to ask Mrs Quilp about that. Pretty Mrs Quilp. Obedient, loving Mrs Quilp, which reminds me... I have left her all alone, and she will be worried. And he smiles, this quilp, in a way that makes me feel as if the light of day itself has become soiled. But have you nothing for me? Oh, the business. Yes, neighbour, I brought it myself for fear of accidents, as being in gold it was rather heavy for Nell to carry, <sighs> though she should perhaps get accustomed to the weight in her bag, since she will carry enough gold when you have passed on. She will be well provided for. I would so like to know your investments, but you are a deep man and keep your secrets close. Oh, yes. Very, very close. Close. And so I shall leave you, neighbour, mm. and leave my love to little Nelly, hoping she may never lose her way again, though in doing so she has procured me an honour I didn't expect. Your servant, sir. And he looks at me with a cold eye, as if to say, I know your game. Yes, I do. And then he's gone. Make us a drink, Grandfather. You must be tired. Yes, yes. M make us a drink, Nell. Listen to me, sir. She will have a fortune, and she will not die as her mother did in misery. No, she will live in... in great... But enough, enough for now. Will you stay for some tea? Uh, no, I must leave you. Good day, sir. Nell. Goodbye, my dear. And I excuse myself and leave them together. The grandfather and the little girl in that shop full of questions and curiosities. Though he may be my son-in-law, mark uh -huh. me well, uh -huh. and they can say all they want. Well, here we are. There's many that do, about Quilp. <laughs> but where, exactly, has our curiosity led us? But there's any number of things he keeps very close. Uh -huh. Exactly. To the house of Mr Daniel Quilp. That mysterious man so interested in little Nell and her grandfather. Oh, they can say what they like. But there's never much the matter with him. Uh -huh. And Mrs. Quilp's mother, a lady, I think, yes, I'm sure, whose opinion of her son-in-law is none too admiring. Ill weeds are sure to thrive. Mama. If your father had spoken to me as Mr. Quilp speaks to you, well... Well, it's all very fine to talk, Mama, but I know that if I were to die today... Quilp could have any woman he wanted. Oh, rubbish. The best-looking woman in the city if he wanted her mother. Oh, he has his ways and his means. If she was free, and he chose to make it so... You let him use you, Betsy. You do. And abuse you too. But you know it, don't you, Mama? Well, I know nothing of a sort. He's a tyrant. You dare not call your soul your own. Pour me more sherry, will you, Betsy? Ah... How nice, Sherry. Oh. 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 We were waiting for you. <laughs> yes. Uh, supper. 
We were waiting upon supper, Quill. Ah, yes, supper. There's nothing wrong in supper, I should suppose. Not at all. Are you of your mother's way of thinking, my dear? Sorry, Quilt, I, I don't... Weren't you saying, dear mother-in-law, that I am... How was it put? A tyrant! <laughs> you look ill, dear mother. Perhaps you should rest. I, I shall rest when I please and not before. But all the same, the good lady finds she does please to go. And Quilp is left alone with his wife, who sits, trembling slightly in a corner. And he takes her hand. How... Oh. You nice creature, you precious darling, you delicious charmer. <laughs> Such a jewel, I'm so fond of her, aren't I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the best of her is, she's so meek and she's so mild and she never has a will of her own. <laughs> <laughs> and she has such an insinuating mother. <laughs> Mrs Quilp? Yes, Quilp? Tomorrow, I shall bring the child Nell here. There is a mystery there about the old man, and I mean to have an answer to it. Do you understand? No, Quilp. Hmm. You will? You will? Yes, Quilp? And now, I feel like smoking. <laughs> no, oh. don't go. Stay where you are in case I need you. And he takes a cigar and a glass of grog and sits, sips and smokes. And the sun goes down and the stars come out. And still he sits and pretty Mrs Quilp sits beside him. And when she fidgets, he grins. And if she starts to doze... Still there! <laughs> My dear. Oh, yes. Yes, Quilp. And he lights another and another and another and sips and blazes away until... Whoa. Bless me, it's day. Open the curtains, my sweet. Why, Betsy, have you been up all night? Mr Quilp... She has, she has. Such a tender companion, so loyal, husband and wife, such perfect company. No, you're a brute! Don't call her so, Mother. Yes, she did keep me from my rest, but who am I to complain? And where is my breakfast, Mother-in-law? Having eaten his breakfast, Daniel Quilp makes his way across town to the banks of the River Thames, where he keeps his office, if office it can be called. Ah, there he is. It's not much more than a rather extensive ruin, but serves Mr Quilp as it serves Quilp's boy. Light! Ain't he light? He's light! An odd youth of some unknown years who looks after the place, after a fashion. Leave it alone, whatever it is, or I'll, I'll... You? You what not? You won't do nothing. I'll beat you with an iron buff. I'll pinch your eyes, so I will. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. A dog you sound like and a dog you are. <laughs> Missed. I'm not in fly for you, Mr. Kill. <laughs> Damn you, dog. You fly dog. <laughs> Quilp's boy contents himself with standing on his head and drumming his feet against the clapboard walls. Stand in your head, you dog! I'll cut your paws off! <laughs> it bothers Quilp not a whit. He even seems to like the music. And he sits and in a trice is asleep. And he dreams until... Wake up, Quilp! Mm. Is a girl coming down? Well, well. Little Nelly. Yes, sir. It's only me. Only do I not see... Tell me I'm not seeing double. Two boys in my yard. Why, sir, that's Kit Nubbins, my grandfather's servant. He, he helps around the shop. He's no harm, Miss Kit. Will you wait, Kit? I'll wait, Miss Nubbins. 
Well, now, come in. Shut the door. Ah. What's your message? I have a letter from my grandfather. Sit down. Good. Wait. Now. Do you know what this is about now? No. Are you sure? I I'm sure. And you may die if you tell a lie. I really don't know. All the money gone in 24 hours. What the devil has he done with it, eh? Huh. You're looking very pretty today, Nell. Charmingly pretty. Are you tired? No, I'm all right, really. But I should get back in... There's no hurry, none at all. Come here, C come closer. What is it, sir? How would you like to be my number two, Nelly? Your what? My second Mrs Quilpay. Oh, when the first one is dead, oh. of course. To be my wife, my little cherry-cheeked, red-lipped wife. I, I don't think, sir, I want to be anyone's wife just now. Oh, Two or three years. You be a good girl and who knows. Now, you should come with me and see her, the present Mrs Quilp. She likes you, you know. But Grandfather told me to come back as soon as I had an answer. But you haven't it, Nell, and you won't have it and can't have it until I've been home. So if you want your answer, you'll have to come along with me. What is going on? It's Kit. He, he's fighting. It is so. Kit Nubbins, servant and general factotum of the curiosity shop, is locked in mortal and muddy combat with... My boy! Down, my boy! You dog! Stop now! You whelps! Kit, stop it! Kit, please! You whelps! You die Fight that last I say that! Could be wrong! You nubbins, you boy, you leave off. And who are you to tell me? Go back to the circus, little man. Oh, we shall meet again, my young friend. The next time, I'll not be so gentle. And as if in down payment, Quilp throws them, quite literally, apart. There are you, little toad. And in a trice, has set off home with Nell. Find his way after us, will he, your boy? Kit knows a thing or two, Mr Quilp. You've no need to worry about Kit. Oh, no, I shan't worry. Oh. Here's Nelly, my dear. Oh, Nell, how nice. <laughs> a biscuit and a glass of wine. She's had a long walk. Then she shall sit with you whilst I write a letter. Oh, Just yeah. wait here, Nell, and we'll fetch you something. Uh, Mrs Quilp, a moment. See if you can get out of her anything about her grandfather. You have a way with you. She'll open up to you, do you hear? Yes, Quilp. Well, what's wrong with you? I do like her. Yes, and she likes you. I mean, I'd rather not. If you could do without making me deceive her. You can do as I tell you, and I'll be here, listening. If you're not sharp enough, I'll creak the door to remind you. <laughs> Here we are now, now. I'll drink this. I've been back and forth so often of late, you must be tired. Oh, no, not at all, Mrs Quilp. I don't mind it at all. I was saying to Grandfather, I think I must have worn a little path between our two front doors. Oh, and what did he say to that? Oh, well, you know, he seemed sad. Sort of sad in that way he does. Would you like a biscuit or um, or, or, or some more wine? I will have a biscuit, if, if I may. Have one of these. Oh. It's it's a Shrewsbury cake and it's flavoured. <laughs> oh, that door creaks. <laughs> but, but your grandfather, he didn't used to be so sad. Oh, no. He used to be... He used to smile all the time. And <sighs> we did all sorts of things and... Well, now we don't... I'm so sorry to hear that. Sometimes me and Kit talk about it, but I, I don't know what happened. Everything was, was different. We can't work it out somehow. He'll change back to what he was, I'm sure. I don't know. I wish... I wish... What do you wish, Nell? 
I don't know. Just that everything was like it used to be. But he does still love you. I mean, it isn't the same anymore. <laughs> How has he changed? Try and... Um, he's out all night and sleeps in the day. Oh. And, and when he comes in sometimes, in the early morning, he... It's as if he's ill and... He tries to hide it, but oh. he cries and... Oh, dear. Ah, all finished. Eating your biscuit now? Uh, yes, thank you. Can I go home now? You're tired. Why not stay to dinner? Mrs Quilt would like that, wouldn't you, my dear? Oh, do stay now. We could send you home. Have you the letter, sir? What? Can't stay? Won't stay. As you will. Here's the note, my dear. It's only to say that I can't do the little piece of business he wants of me. That I shall see him tomorrow or maybe the day after. Thank you, sir. And, if I'm not mistaken, that Kit Nubbins of yours has found his way to my door and will, no doubt, see you safe home. And so saying, Daniel Quilp lays his hand on the child's shoulder and leads her from the room. And Mrs Quilp waits holding her hand to her lips, as if she has done something dreadful. What a keen questioner you are, ain't you, Mrs Q? What more could I do? You could have done less. You could have been less than mother. I am sorry for her. Really, I am. Yes, and it was to you she betrayed her secret, and it was to me that you betrayed her trust. Oh, stop it, Quilp. That's so horrible. And you can thank your lucky stars that you did. For now I've got the clue I want. The man's a gambler, and if I'm not mistaken, a poor gambler. But what does that mean to me? How can I use it, eh? To get what I want from the old man. Quilp, where are you? I've got money. I must, I must. Just one more night and we'll be rich. It's been two days, two whole days since you came back from Quilp. The old man is frantic, but he's fearing perhaps me. that he's the game two is days, up. Two days, two days, Nell. Two days, Grandfather. Then where is he? Shall I go back? Tomorrow, early. I'll be there and back before seven. It would be of no earthly use. That man knows what he wants and won't change, not a thing. But if he deserts me now... When everything is so close, Nell, do you realise that tonight, well, tomorrow, certainly, everything will be mended? Yes, all restored to the way it was. But if he does not come to me, then we'll be beggars. What if we are, Grandfather? Eh? We could be beggars and happy, couldn't we? Oh, <laughs> beggars and happy? <laughs> Poor child. Well, maybe I don't understand, but it would be better than, than the way we live now. No. We could go away. We could forget everything that happened here. We could. We really could. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and how would... We live. Oh, you don't understand anything, Nell. God bless you, but you don't. I, I know you People mean well. People would help us. You'll see. They will. Come on. Now. Grandfather, now. Pack up just what we need and go. Please. Will he listen to the child? Please. For her sake. Or... Uh, oh, how touching. Quilp, how did you... Through the door, I can't yet get for anything smaller like a keyhole, eh, Miss Nelly? <laughs> Perhaps you would leave us alone. I want to have a chat with your grandfather. I have to go to market. But will you be all right, Grandfather? Yes, yes, of course. Let me kiss you. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a nice kiss that mm. was. Mm. Oh, just on the rosy part. What a lovely kiss. Such a fresh, blooming, yeah, modest cool. little bud, eh, neighbour? Yeah. Such a chubby, rosy, cosy Nell. Have you brought more? Shh. 
you know that girl of yours? She's so so beautifully yeah. modelled, so fair, her skin so tender, and such winning mm. ways about her, and such little feet. Once and for all, did you bring money? No. Then the child and I are lost. Neighbour, you have no secrets from me. What do you mean? No secrets, not the one. The money. All these loans, advances, supplies, I know where they find their way. Shall no, I say it? No, no. Well, the gaming table. No. This was the scheme to make your fortune. Mm. This was the scheme which yes. I was supposed to finance. Yes. It is. It will be. No, it will not. You can't understand. I can understand that I have been made a fool of by a... A gambler. No, no, no gambling. I have never played for gain or for the love of the cards. Not for me, for her. For Nell. It was all for Nell. When did it start? When I, I thought how little I'd saved for her. I thought about it for a long time. Then I began, you see. I have a system. Only fate, luck, chance, time. That's all I need. Time and a stake. You never won. Never, ever yet won back my loss. Don't they say that if a man plays long enough, he is sure to win at last, or at least not to come off a loser? Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, 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 Quilp. For three nights I have dreamed of winning a large sum. It is so strong, I can feel it. I know this time. Oh. Just one more loan and everything will be paid. Oh, it will be paid. Yes, yes everything will be paid. Yes, good Quilp, kind Quilp. But there will be no loan. No. No, indeed, no. For her sake, if not for mine. Ah, oh, for little Nelly's sake. Or oh, for little Nelly. For her. For Nell, Quilp. For Nelly, just once more. I might as easily have the girl without the money, neighbour. For who will you depend upon now? Whose charity? How would I see him as a son-in-law? No. Never. I will find money elsewhere. I will win. No, you will not. You will be beggars without my help. Oh, Lord, how did I come to this? How did I find your secret? Shall I tell you who let it slip? Who? Who told you? Mm. Shall we say it was that boy of yours, that um, rude fighting boy, it's Kit Kit Nubbins, is it, who thinks I'm such oh. a little man? Yes, oh, Kit told me, and now... Good day to you, neighbour. We will talk again about you and I and little Nelly. Oh. <laughs> and all unknowing of this cruel betrayal, Kit Nubbins helps Nell I'll with the shopping. Pound, the king of cabbages, Miss Nell, if ever I behold one. Did you ever behold one, Kit? A uh, cabbage king? Uh, can't rightly say as I have. But if I had this, would be very like it. <laughs> Kit, you do me good. You make me laugh. No, we all need to laugh, Miss. And even more so when the money's in short supply. I wish sometimes there never was such a thing as money. It seems to vex Grandfather, sir. So. Uh, leeks, Miss. I beg your pardon? Leek soup. Mama swears by it. Leek and potato soup with a bit of chicken or beef, if you have it. Or mutton or pork. <laughs> These is good leeks, mark my words. The, the king, king of, of leeks. leeks. <laughs> <laughs> you should take him away, miss. The old master. I'd say get him away from London. It'd do him the world of good. I'm sure it would, Kit. Fresh air, none of this smoke and smog. That'd set him up. Why, well, it would set the pair of you up. Not that it's any of my business, of, of course. Of course it is, Kit. Because you're a good friend. But now, we have to buy wisely. Grandfather, we're back. What? Who? Who is back? We are. Me and Kit. And we've a fine load of cows. Oh! Oh, you! You viper! 
You traitor, you vile, vile, go! Get out! Master! Go! He, he is sick, kid. Maybe you should go. Lost. But... Lost everything. Lost. Please. Lost. I don't know what it's oh, all about. It's lost. I'll go, but I'll come back. Never. Boy, never. You have killed me. Struck me down. Uh, miss, I'll wait. Go! I'll come when I can, but you must go now, Kit. Oh. It's all right. Oh. He's going, Grandfather. He's going. I. Gone. All gone. In that single moment, it seems, the old man falls into despair and fever and madness. For days, nobody comes. Even banished Kit can only prowl around outside. Then... A good day, Missy. May I come in? Yes, of course I may. You wouldn't keep Daniel Quilp away, would you? Grandfather cannot see anyone, sir. He is too ill. He has hardly spoken in a week. Please, let us alone, if you will. No. Nelly, my dear sweet girl, there is nothing I would rather do than let you be. But, you see, the law will not allow me debts that must be paid. Sir, we will pay what is owed. I know my grandfather would... The ne law? The law. And before the majesty of the law, we are all helpless. And the shop you see now is now mine to administer, to run, as you might say, how I wish. But how can that be? What is owed must be paid one way or another. And we don't want to be disturbed by customers, do we now? Swarming like a chest of drawers with remarkable dexterity, Quilp pulls down the shop door bell. Grandfather. Indeed you must. And now... Yes? I like my soup hot with lots of pepper. Nell hurries away, leaving the new owner in occupation, though not alone. For once she has gone, Quilp's boy slides from a corner and slips into a chair. Ah. Oh. I miss a crib fit for a king. He pulls out pipes and tobacco and proceeds to fill for his master and himself. And presently the shop and the rooms above are filled with the stink of strong tobacco. This is good. This is fragrant. Makes a man feel like the Grand Turk, don't it, you dog? <laughs> Indeed, the place is shrouded in a fog. Here we are, and here we shall stay until the old fella upstairs is dead. And pretty now may redeem his debt to me. What is it? Fire! Run! Hide! Shh. Run! Father! Just Drink this. It's no fire. Fire! Just a little smoke. <coughs> Let me see. Actually, quite a lot of smoke. Let me see. Never Your worry. hand. You're, you're hiding the Queen Father? of Hearts. The little Queen. Well, no. You must rest. My, my winnings. Yeah. All gold. All my gold. Uh, Nell sits oh. by the bed watching as he sleeps at last. And then she too sleeps, nodding in her chair. But the sweetest rest must end. Why, what a pretty little Nell, and soon to be Nell all alone. Do not say so, sir, please. And have you come to sit on Quilp's knee? Or maybe to slip into your little bedroom? I do hope the smoke will not have made it nasty for you. Let me see. Why? Hardly a whiff of tobacco, just... Sweet Nell. <laughs> I was not going to stay at all. I want a few things. I should stay with Grandfather. I shall not come down at all. 
But it's such a nice little room, quite a bower. I do not want it any more. Are you sure? I'm sure, sir. Now, if you'll let me pass. Quite sure. No, I assure you, sir, I do not want it any more. So sensitive. She's so very sensitive. A pity, but never mind. The bed is very much my size. I think I shall make it my little room. And so saying, Daniel Quilp throws himself upon the bed, kicking up his feet, crumpling the smooth white linen sheets. Nelly, Eleanor, sweet Nell. Poor Kit Nubbins, banished for no reason he knows from the old curiosity shop, and worse, from Miss Nell. But though his spirits are cast down, he tries his very best not to show it at home, in the crowded and tiny rooms that look out onto a narrow and sunless court, across which he hurries. Bless us! What's that? Who do you reckon, Ma? King of Spain, that's for sure. Oh. Sit down, love, you look all in. <clears throat> no work to be found today, Ma. But never fear, tomorrow's another day. Well, that's what your dear old dad said. Just about an hour before he upped and died. Oh, poor old soul that he was. Ah, oh, yes, indeedy. The room in which we and Kit find ourselves is poor but homely. It is clean from the look of her. Mrs. Nubbins is not a woman to suffer dirt or disorder. Even now, past ten in the evening, she's at work, ironing away. The baby is now asleep, though an older boy, maybe two or three, sits chewing something unrecognisable. All in all, it is rather a queer-looking family, since Kit, his mum, and the two younger children look very much alike. Well, Kit... It's no use moping about what you can't mend. On the other hand, I can think of few places I'd rather be did I need rest and the comfort of my friends. True enough, Ma. Dead. It is sort of unmendable. Ah, any chance of a slice of bread and a bit of beef? <laughs> Been waiting for you three hours or more. Mm-mm-mm. What are you going to do, Ma? <laughs> I hope there are many better than me, Kit. And I'm sure there are. Leastways, according to what the parson at the chapel says. Fat lot he knows about it. Let him try being a widow and working like you do. What you get and keeping his spirits up. Look, when he can do that, then I'll ask him for the time and trust him to be right to half a second. <sighs> Beers by the fender, Kit. Well, I know you don't like me going on about the preacher, so good health to you, Mark, and to him. I don't bear him any grudge. And, uh, you ain't been round to the shop? See how the old fella is? Well, to tell the truth, I do go round that way, just to keep an eye out. Does she know? Of course she don't. You do it just the same, even after the old fella threw you out? Well, I know what some people would say, Kit. Oh, yeah, what? You fall in love with her. <laughs> Get out of it. What a load of rubbish. Oh, the way the old fella used to keep her locked up. Not seeing a soul from one week's end to the next. It's, it's not natural, to my way of thinking. And if she hadn't had you, son, she'd had nobody. Well, uh, you can... Somebody outside. Crossing the yard and fast, too. Oh. Blind me, oh. Miss Nell. Oh. Come in, come in. You shouldn't be round these parts at this time of night. What is it? What's the matter, love? It's Grandfather. <gasps> He's not... He came out of his fever at about five o'clock. He seems better. A lot better. Oh, well, thank the Lord. He's really better, miss? Yes. I mean, if I come round... He still says it. You're not wanted. You must never come near us again. What? Never. That's what he said. Don't ask me why, because I don't know. 
This is... I mean, he... I don't know what you've done to him, Kit, but I hope it isn't very bad. What I done? I done nothing at all. You know that. But you heard him. Look, just let me talk to him. No, I can't let that happen. If he believes I betrayed him too, I'm all he's got left now. You can't come back, Kit. Never. Oh, Kit, what have you done? I thought you were my friend. I trusted you. You were the only friend I had. Whatever it is, I know my boy would never, never do no harm to no one. Never, ever. It's all right, Ma. I bought his money for the week and... and a little more because... because of all the t times we... I hope that you'll you'll find somewhere else, another position, and and that you'll do well. And, oh, I hate this, and I wish it hadn't happened, and, and that everything. I'm sorry. I have to go. Mrs. Nubbins stands dumbstruck, the iron hissing on the stove. She has no reason to doubt her son. She knows the boy, and yet these things are being said against him. Things, what things? Things unnamed, robbery, violence. Perhaps he was not watching the old curiosity shop, but out in the Seven Dials plotting. But no, impossible. And Kid sits with his mouth open in a state of utter stupefaction. Observing Kit as I do, I can say quite truthfully that he is not a deep thinker, more a boy of action, not given to sentimentality about people or animals. His feeling runs straight and true, and after a pretty uncomfortable night, he wakes and washes away the doubts of the night before. Not still looking glum, are you, Ma? What am I to think after last night? You sneaking away to your bed without so much as another word. What was I to think? Well, you should think about what is. What is? Instead of what ain't. And what are you on about, boy? Well, look at it this way, Ma. I don't know what the old fella's got in his noggin, do I? I hope you don't. Well, I don't. So there ain't no earthly use worrying about it. What I do know is what I've done. Or what I ain't done. And what ain't you done? Well, I ain't done nothing. I should hope not. No son of mine. Exactly, Ma. It wouldn't happen. Never. You know that and I know that. And it don't make one blind bit of difference if the rest of the world thinks I'm Sawney Bean or all them travellers. What's he got to do with it? Who? Sawney Bean. That's nothing, Ma. I'm just saying that so long as you and me know what's the truth, the rest of them can go hang, which is what happened to Sawney Bean in the end. Well, you can't go around eating people, can you? No, Ma. But what I must do is go around and look for some work, being as I'm out of it at present. I might at least find a gent's horse to hold. Eat your breakfast first, Kit. The early bird gets the worm. Breakfast, then worms. Horses, ma. And breakfast it is, though a poor one and not a lot more in prospect. And after, Kit sets out for town. And what a lot of gentlemen on horseback there are riding up and down. Hold your horse, sir. And how few of them. Sir, sir, need your horse help for her. Want their horses held. Moment. Kit is getting tired of waiting when he notices a little clattering, jingling, four-wheeled chase drawn by an obstinate-looking, rough-coated pony. It is driven by a little old gentleman with a little old lady beside him. Will you behave, sir? Will you do as I tell you? For some reason, as the carriage passes... Kit catches the old gentleman's eye, and for some reason, the pony chooses to stop. Oh, hello, oh, 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 oh. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Oh. I didn't mean to make you stop. Believe me, my boy, nothing makes this wretched animal stop unless he is so minded. I was just wondering if, well, you might want the horse held. Oh, why, indeed, young man, that would be. Oh, 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 wait, 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 don't worry, hold on. Sir, oh. Whoa, Whiskar, whoa! Don't worry, sir, I have him now. Come on, then. What did you say his name was, sir? Whisker. Oh, it might as well be Imp of Satan. Are you all right, dear? 
Oh, oh, good, good, wonderful. <laughs> and so saying, the old gentleman helps his wife out of the carriage and, leaving Kit in charge of the pony, they go into an office marked Witherden, Notary Public. Now, Mark, you hold him well, young man, and you shall have a sixpence when we come out. And sixpence being by no means a sum to be sneezed at. Uh, don't you fret, sir. Whisker and me will be good mates in no time, eh? <laughs> that I would like to see. Come along, dear. And in they go. And so Kit stands, holding the bridle patiently, until a young gent emerges from the notary's office. A young gent with something of a superior attitude about him. One of those young men at the same time irritating, and yet somehow fascinating. And not a little sharp-tongued, who can't resist poking his nose into, well, everything. <coughs> You, holding the horse. Well, of course I'm holding the horse. Any fool with an eye on his head can see that. Lord bless me, young snob. I weren't asking if you was holding the horse. I was addressing you as one what was at that moment holding the horse. As in you, young snob, what is holding the horse. Well, as it happens, I, Kit Nubbins, is holding the horse. And not this here young snob, you said. Young snob being one what thinks himself smarter than others. I don't think I'm smarter than no one. Thinks he's got one over on someone. Such as? Old Mr Garland. Reckon you got him wrapped round your little finger, I should say. I'm just the pony's race. Oh, very smart, young snob. Very deep. But you'd have to get up early in the morning to get one past Chuckster. You being Chuckster like. Correct. Young snob. I wish you wouldn't keep calling me... Chuckster don't trust you, sir. Not by a long nor a short chalk. First moment I saw you, I said to myself, that boy is up to no good. All I'm up to is holding a horse. Are they going to be long in there? <laughs> long as they need. Mr Garland is settling his son with the notary's firm. Going to join us is young Mr Garland. Not that he's that young, like. Not that it's your business, like. And, uh, oh, um, not Kit's business, but he is able in a few moments to ascertain the truth of Mr Chuckster's rather insolent remarks when old Mr Garland and his wife emerge accompanied by the notary and a gentleman who must be young Mr Garland. Though to Kit's eye, and Kit has a sharp eye, young Mr Garland doesn't look that much younger than his dad. Very well done. Very well done. Right, Abel? Settled you well here, I should say. Uh, Mrs Garland, might I offer you a hand up? And, uh, Mr Garland, sir? Oh, oh, oh wait. Wait, I, um, I, I promised this boy, um, uh, a, a sixpence. Uh, yes, yes. The sixpence is what, um, um my dear, d d do you have a... Oh, uh, but neither Mr Garland, nor Mrs, nor young Mr Abel, nor the notary, nor, upon a point of honour, Mr Chuckster. Sorry, not a penny, nor a thrupney bit, not a farthing, nor a halfpenny, and most certainly not a silver sixpence. Looks like you're out of luck, young snob. Ah, uh, it don't matter none, sir. The pony was good company. Better than some. Uh, no, young fellow, not a, not a sixpence. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, here is a shilling. Now, I'm coming here again next week, Monday. So you'll be here to work it out, hmm? <laughs> yeah, thank you, sir. I'll be sure to be here. Oh, yes, we can believe that, can't we? Sure to be here. That's a good one. <laughs> sure to be here. Mark my words, we'll never see young snob again. Mm.